Hello and welcome to the British Wheelchair Basketball Women's League Highlight Show. I'm your host, Stephen Jamieson. We're back in Nottingham for round two and it promises to be just as exciting as the first. Here's what's coming up on the show. We've got a featured game and all the highlights from an action-packed weekend in Division 1. We speak to GB head coach Miles Thompson and see all the best bits from the final pool games from Division 2 as we head into the crunch time of the quarterfinals. So we've got an absolutely fantastic show coming up for you. But if you are new to the sport of wheelchair basketball, don't worry. We've got you covered with everything you need to know. Just take a look at this. Wheelchair basketball is similar to basketball in many ways. The court size and hoop height are identical, as is the scoring system. Two for a basket and three for a long shot beyond the three-point line. The rules are largely similar too, although travelling works slightly differently in this sport, with players only allowed to propel themselves forward in their chair twice without bouncing the ball. This sport is also non-contact too, however chair-to-chair -chair contact is expected and allowed within reason. This sport is inclusive and caters for absolutely everyone, so a system is in place to balance the teams. Each player is individually classified according to their functional ability on a scale of 1 to 5, and teams are only allowed a set total on the court at any one time. The league is divided into two divisions. Division 1 contains four sides, whereas Division 2 contains two pools of four teams. Both divisions will end their seasons with the playoffs, which will determine their champions. So straight into the action then this week, onto our featured game, it's the London Titans against the undefeated Sheffield Steelers in Division 1. Can the Steelers hold on to that unbeaten record? The two teams came into this one after each having had a pretty successful opening round. The Steelers were looking to maintain their 100% record, while the second place Titans were hoping to close the gap. Both sides had injuries to contend with however, with the Titans Jude Hamer sidelined after having an injection for an arm injury and Sophie Carrigill of the Steelers still recovering from a virus. Both teams took their time to find their shooting range but eventually after several near misses Joanne Harper put the Steelers ahead. It had all the makings of a tight game and so it was proving with even Maddie Thompson struggling to create the openings required for scores. It didn't take the Titans long to level up either, as Pauline McDonald had her sights primed to perfection for this effort. It was the kind of game where errors were going to be punished, and even players like the experienced Jill Fox weren't immune to the pressure, as she fumbled mid-court and fouled Sarah Grady before she could burst through. Grady duly dispatched clinically from the free throw line for the Titans. The introduction of Jessica Pilkington off the bench certainly made a difference for the Steelers as she helped herself to the first of her game-leading sum of 17 rebounds here to put two more on the board for the Sheffield side. The Steelers had to make do without their talisman Maddie Thompson from the second quarter onwards as she was feeling unwell, but 17-year-old Leah Evans was more than happy to step up to the plate in her absence, seizing first on the loose ball, then after a quick exchange of passes, released a perfect shot for two more on the board for the Steelers. The Sheffield team were starting to get into their rhythm and Jordana Bartlett showed excellent dexterity and poise here to push the Steelers in front. We mentioned it was tight and at half-time it was exactly that, 24-21 with the Titans marginally behind. It needed a big third quarter from the Londoners and they duly delivered with Helen Turner sinking this superb one-hander as she was fouled, allowing her to add further to the score with typical style. As we headed into the fourth, the teams were neck and neck with barely anything separating them. With less than five minutes to go, the Titans were just three points ahead and we were in for a grandstand finish. The Steelers fought back with a couple of baskets of their own, Jessica Pilkington again finding the scoring, but then the Titans went back to a point ahead through this agonising effort from Sarah Grady. With just a minute to go and a point in the match, who would go on to triumph? The Steelers struck first in the deciding minute with Bartlett again showing superb shooting accuracy from an awkward position and now it was the Steelers with the advantage. 
The Titans then had a free throw chance through Megan Wood, but she could only convert one of them, meaning it was a tie game with just seconds to go. Who would come out on top? It was to come down to another free throw, and Yvonne Waft showed, appropriately enough, nerves of steel to convert them both. 45-43 to the Steelers, and that's how it finished. An unbelievable game decided in the final moments. We caught up with Jill Fox after the match. What a wonderfully close game that was. Very close. Uh, touch and go at the last, but we won it. The team did absolutely fantastic. Does, does that show the strength of this league, the, the, the competition as a whole, how close that game was? It does. I mean, the, there's quality teams in um, quality players in each team. And to be fair, it's, it, it's quite even. It's just on the day. But, and we was very fortunate because we lost two of our two of our main players uh, due to illness today. So the team rallied round. I think they did absolutely fantastic. Was there a point in the game where you thought we're not going to get this? Oh God, yeah! <laughs> right till the very end. <laughs> well, what an incredible start to Division One's play this weekend. Let's find out how the rest of the teams got on. Coventry will have learnt some big lessons from their winless start to the campaign in round one. Joy Hazelden unlucky here as they took on the Vixens who were second in the table going into this weekend. The Vixens were slick and organised as ever, Claire Griffiths setting up Amy Conroy for two of her 30 points in this contest. The GB star was relentless throughout, ending the game with 65% shooting accuracy. Even a multitasking coach was no problem as the Vixens ran out 59-32 winners. And after the match, Alan March caught up with Claire Griffiths. Uh, first game out in round two and a victory against Coventry. Yeah, a really good team performance today. We, it was a close game when we played them last time, so we were determined to come out strong and put some of the mistakes behind us that we made last time. And, and that's exactly what we did. So it was a fantastic team out there today. What's the morale like in the Vixens team? Yeah, good. It's, everyone really enjoys playing for the team. Uh, we've got a tough game later against Titans and uh, it's about another team performance. So yeah, we're feeling good, feeling good. Division 1's penultimate game of the day saw the top of the table and still unbeaten Steelers face off against the winless and bottom side CWBA. A predictable game to call, you might think, or think again, as the CWA put in a superb performance to upset the form book. Sarah Hope was lethal from close range and was ably assisted to her 17 points by some superb approach play, such as this from Charlotte Moore. A tremendous result for Coventry side, who continued to improve game by game. CWBA 53, Steelers 49. With the Steelers dropping points then, who out of the Titans and Vixens would gain ground on the leaders? The Titans here cleverly playing in Helen Turner, and the ex-GB player doesn't miss from there. The Titans struggled to keep tabs on Amy Conroy throughout, and the Vixens number 10 showed great drive to make space before eventually sinking this for two. Conroy again showed some more of the elusiveness that is fast becoming her trademark, setting up Robin Love for this score. And it was the Vixens who came out on top, edging it 43-39. So despite their slip-up against CWBA costing them their unbeaten record, the Steelers still top the tree in Division 1. The Vixens won both their games this weekend, so moved to just one point behind the Steelers, whilst it was a weekend to forget for the London Titans, as two defeats saw them lose ground on the Vixens and have them looking over their shoulder at CWBA, who are now only a point behind them, after that stunning maiden victory. Next up, I spoke to one particularly keen observer of the weekend's action. Miles, first question is, uh, how impressed have you been by what you've seen today? Uh... I really enjoy Women's League. This is my second time uh, to attend. There's so many collective and individual stories going on that uh, it's hard not to get really enthralled with it all. Yeah, and as a, from a GB standpoint, how great is it to see all your players competing at such a level? Well, really, it's, 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 a, it's a nice canvas to watch because usually it's five players on the floor that represent the GB effort. But now when I, I can sit here and watch and watch 10, 15 players on two courts at a time, uh, getting better. 
So how does that help the GB team in this league there, being, ha being as it is? Uh, anytime, minutes on the court, uh, competing. Uh, you know, we had a big push this week to really take care of the basketball uh, because we noticed that, the, that you can get away with some things, but are we really taking care of the basketball by using our outside hand, by using our non-dominant hand? All right, uh, and, I, and the answer is yes. Uh, they're, doing, they're doing a decent job of taking care of the basketball. Good stuff, and Osaka Cup coming up Japan next week. Big tournament for you guys. How much are you excited for that, and how much of an experience will that be to the players that are heading over? Some really young players involved there as well. Yeah, we're taking not all young players, but the majority young players. Uh, it's a bit of an audition, uh, if you will. You know, how, how the, our younger players are going to handle uh, nine hours of time zone away. Uh, but it's a talented group. There's a lot of talent within the youth in GB. And uh, that's very attractive to me as a coach. And now we, now we get to see what they can do under the lights against a team like Australia, Canada, and Japan, which are all formidable opponents. OK, Miles, thank you ever so much for talking to us. And now let's find out who Miles has selected. Jordana Bartlett impressed this weekend in our featured game and will be hoping to carry on that form over onto the international stage. She's joined by her fellow Steeler Sophie Carrigill, who's no stranger to playing for her country. Amy Conroy is the first of several Vixens in the squad, and after another great weekend, it's no surprise she's selected. She's joined by the first of her teammates, Natasha Davies, and the 24-year-old played a big part in the Vixens' strong weekends. 17-year-old Leah Evans has all the enthusiasm in the world, but the youngster also showed she could really mix it with the best. Claire Griffiths brings a touch more experience to the group and she'll be looking to repeat some of her Vixens link play with her GB colleagues. At 16, Joy Hazelden is the joint youngest member of the squad but there's absolutely no doubting her precocious talent. Jude Hamer has been there and done it at international level and although she missed this week with injury, she's hoping to be fighting fit. Robin Love has been playing for both the Angels and the Vixens in the Women's League this year so has plenty of game time behind her. While Charlotte Moore completes the lineup, they're another extremely talented youngster. And a quick mention for the All-Star game coming up in round three, where you'll be able to see plenty of the players selected here, and many more, in the first ever UK Women's Wheelchair Basketball All-Star game, which will see East face West in a fantastic showcase of the league's quality. Tickets are free at this address, and booking is essential. So we've seen how Division 1 got on this weekend. Now let's find out what happened in Division 2. The first game in Division 2 in Round 2 started with the Spitfires taking on Bell's Angels of the North. After scoring over 100 points in their two games in Round 1, the Angels showed their quality again. Caroline Ballard East driving forward with the score. Want fighting spirit? Well, check out Stokes' Kirsty Cotter. After seeing her pass intercepted brilliantly by Catherine Eason, the Spitfire flew back down court to make amends. Angels 64, Spitfires 15. It was a game of what could have been for the Titans as they lost out to Steelers seconds. The London side created plenty. Ruth Eitel's miss saw Joe Richards on hand with the rebound and a quick-fire tactic of getting the ball up to Pacey Leah Evans would catch the Titans out more than once. Zaymoglu firing off the shot for the Titans on this occasion and the same outcome as a London miss would see the Richards-Evans combination strike again to deadly effect. It finished Steelers 55, Titans 30. This class saw the table topping Black Widows take on the Bells Angels of the North Seconds and it took no time at all for the Leeds outfit to assert their class. This stunning basket from Gina Smallwood, one of the picks of the bunch. The irrepressible Widows were tireless in their pursuit of more points and defended from the front, a tactic which led to Jade Louise Lachlan grabbing this simple score. It ended Widows 51, Bells 9. An intriguing battle this one, which would decide the two sides' seedings for the quarterfinals. It started so well for the Blue Stars with this superb solo score from Kate Paris, but the Blackhawks flew back from the brink with some excellent baskets of their own. This shot from Ashley Greening, a great example of the Blackhawks' talent, and they were quick to break away when the Blue Stars didn't quite get it right up top. This eventually paid 57-22 to the Blackhawks. 
So in Pool A, the Angels of the North recorded their third straight victory to head into the quarterfinals as the pool's top seed. The question going into this round of games was who would take the second and third spots, and after a great game, the Steelers' seconds picked up second seeding. The Titans finished third, while the Spitfires ended fourth. It was an eerily similar tale in Pool B. For the Angels of the North, Reed leads Spider's Black Widows, who also claimed their third victory out of three. And there was again a shootout for second and third, and it was the Blackhawks who were triumphant, meaning the Blue Stars remained in third, while the Bell's second squad ended fourth. So going into the quarterfinal stage, this was how the tournament shaped up, with all the teams drawn according to how they finished the league season. Some mouth-watering ties in prospect, so let's see how they got on. An interesting conflict of interests here for the Bell's second team coach Anna Jackson, as the first team player was tasked with masterminding defeat against her own team. As the game got underway, however, it became clear an upset was unlikely, as Paula Johnson proved with this effort. The firsts didn't have it all their own way though, as the seconds did get the better of their defence on a few occasions, Carrie Cannon here firing in the rebound. But ultimately the team in white had just too much for the Blues, with Ima McSorley, who ended the game with five rebounds, helping with a couple of fine scores. First this, and then rounding off this great team move towards the end of the match. An interesting encounter, but the result went with form, Bell's firsts 48, Bell's seconds 12. The Spitfires came into this one as huge underdogs, especially given the strength of this Leeds Black Widows team. And Leeds started brightly early on as some solid defence was the springboard for a counter-attack, which Gina Smallwood duly finished to put just some of her 22 points on the board. Spitfires coach Andy Flowers certainly had his work cut out here. Smallwood continued her fine form throughout this game as the relentless attacker swept up rebounds from all angles. First from Jade Louise Lachlan's shot and then had this score for two more from one of her own efforts. She was clearly enjoying this one. The Widows didn't have it all their own way though as Chrissy Rapsey was about to find out. But the result was worth the pain of this one as the Widows took it 56-8. The third quarter final sees the Steelers seconds taking on the Eastern Blue Stars. Kate Paris leading from the front here with a great score. Paris was at it defensively not long after, denying Yvonne Waft a rebound from her shot. But it was a rare miss for Waft, who didn't take long to get into a shooting rhythm as she amassed a total of 12 points throughout the game. The Steelers were impressive throughout the second and third quarters where they really developed their lead, winning them 14-7 and 10-1 respectively. It was a closer affair than we've seen so far in the other quarterfinals, but on the hooter it was Steelers seconds 38, Blue Stars 18. Our final game of the weekend saw the London Titans seconds take on the Blackhawks and the Londoners just weren't in form for when finding the hoop. Three bites of the cherry was too much to ask for and the Blackhawks raced down the other end to score through number six, Michaela Bell. It happened again not long after as the Titans' uncharacteristic wastefulness was duly punished, this time by Rosie Williams. Williams was in inspired form, this just two of her 21 points from the game and she was in no mood to hang around as the number 13 was indeed unlucky from the free throw line. But she was quick to rectify her error and set about continuing to add to her impressive points total. The Titans defence had no answer to their opponent's firepower and the Blackhawks took it 49-21. So after those brilliant quarterfinals, here's how the semi-finals line up. The Angels of the North will take on Titan Conqueror's Blackhawks, while as Leeds Spiders Black Widows face a Yorkshire Derby against the Steelers' seconds. Catch those fixtures in round three. Well, that's that then. Another week over here at the Women's League. And what a round it's been here in Nottingham. Full of action and instant as ever. Make sure you check out the British Wheelchair Basketball website for all you need to know about the sport itself and any upcoming events. And until next time, it's goodbye. <laughs>